All right, today we are actually, I'm going to get rid of this title. Um, we're going to do a different title. Um, you can title your notes Species Interactions. So we're going to be talking about how different species interact with each other and how this plays a role in fitness. Remember, we talked about fitness with natural selection. We said that fitness is the ability to survive until reproductive age and produce offspring that also survive as well. So you should have your notebook out taking notes on species interactions. So here's where we're going to start. We have six different species interactions. You do not need to write these down. We're going to go through each one of them uh, separately. But take a look at this list. See if there are any that you recognize. Competition, predation, parasitism, mutualism, commensalism, and symbiosis. Again, you do not need to write this list down because we're going to go through each one separately. So competition is the first one. Competition happens when two species attempt to utilize the same resource, okay? And it's due to the fact that there are limited resources, okay? So it happens because there are limited resources. I always use the example, if I were to put a bowl of candy in the middle of the cafeteria during lunch, what would happen? People would run towards it, people might end up fighting over the candy because there's not enough to go around. So when we have limited resources, we're going to have competition. So as you can see, these two lions down here are fighting probably for this female lion in the background. They're competing. Why? Because there's not as many females. There are two males and there's one female. Now competition reduces the fitness of either one of the species or both of them. So if they're both fighting, they're using up energy, energy that could be used for reproduction, right? The whole goal of fitness is reproduction. Sometimes it will only reduce the fitness of one species, but more likely than not, it'll reduce the fitness of both species. So these two lions aren't having or don't have as much energy. Maybe they get a scratch, right? So their fitness or their health is lowered because they're competing. They're having to use all this extra energy to fight for this female rather than just having a female readily available. And because they have to fight, you know, that's reducing their fitness. So competition is a pretty straightforward concept, but when it relates to fitness, I would say typically it reduces the fitness of both species, okay? Now there's two different types of competition, okay? As you see here, we've got two lions fighting. So two members of the same species could be fighting. That is called inter-specific, or sorry, intra-specific competition. Inter-specific competition is between two different species, okay? So we have inter-specific competition. This is, would be happening if, say, for example, a lion and a tiger were both competing for water or a zebra and an elephant both wanted the same tree branch. Or if a penguin and, you know, one species of penguin and another species of penguin both wanted the same breeding ground or same nest area. So this is competition between two different species. And the easiest way to remember that is different, has ease in it, just like inter has ease in it, all right? Now the other type of con competition is between two of the same species. So here you see these two guys fighting over something. Um, not sure what it is, but they're, they're battling. This is called intra-specific competition. If any of you have siblings that play intramurals, intramurals happen within your college. So I'll give you a second to write this down. I'll explain what I mean by that. So when you go to college, right, let's say you're not a star athlete, you didn't get recruited, you're not going to play D1 basketball, but you still like to play basketball. They have something here called intramural sports, okay? They have it at all colleges, intramural, okay? And what this means is that there's sports teams within the college, and you just play each other. It's kind of like a rec league, rec league, sorry, or like pick up basketball games at the recplex, okay? 
intramural teams, you form, you take some of your friends, you form an intramural basketball team, and you play against other teams that are still within your same school. So you're not representing your school and going off to, you know, Duke and um, Loyola and playing all of these basketball games, okay? You are staying within the school, but you're just playing other people from the same school, all right? So intraspecific competition is you're just competing against other people that are within your population. They're the same species as you. So maybe, um, you know, two humans are fighting over, you know, who's going to get the last piece of Easter candy. Maybe two rhinos are competing over a dead animal. Hippo, or I suppose that's hippos. Hippos like to eat dead animals. Um, Rhinos, you know, maybe they're competing over some land or territory, okay? So they can compete over many different things. Now, we're going to move on to the next one. This is pretty easy. You guys know predator prey, okay? Predation is just when one species eats another. You can see this awesome lion going at this zebra, okay? Um, it also includes plants. So here we have a koala bear eating some bamboo. That's predation. It's feeding, feeding on another species. This is a species of plant that it is eating. Now, take a guess at what kind of, uh, or what this does to fitness, okay? Obviously, it's going to enhance the fitness of one predator and reduce the fitness of whatever is being eaten because whatever is being eaten is going to be dead, okay? So, predation is an important part of food webs. It's an important part of cycling, nutrient cycling, and so predation is one of the interactions we can have between organisms that live in the same community or the same ecosystem. All right, this is what you guys read an article about. Um, if you need more time, just ask the sub to go back and pause it if you need more time to write. So parasitism is when one species feeds on another without killing the other species. So it's not predation, okay? If you've ever gotten bitten by a mosquito, mosquitoes are parasites. Why? Because they suck the blood right out of your arm, okay? So they're feeding on your blood. They're reducing the fitness that you have because they're causing you to itch and you're losing a little bit of blood. And this guy has a full belly now because he just ate. Other things that are parasites, ticks, okay, if you've ever gotten like a wood tick, um, like tapeworms that like live in your intestines um, and feed off of like the stuff that you have in your intestines. So it enhances the fitness of the parasite and reduces the fitness of the host. If you guys want to shorten this writing here for this part, I still want you to write this down, but um, if you want, you could just draw a plus and a minus to show that it benefits one organism and reduces the fitness of the other organism, okay? So parasites always need a host. Typically, they can't live by themselves. That's why ticks attach on to humans because they have to get food that way. And so typically, they just live with whatever host they're having until their host kicks them off, you know, until you swat away the mosquito or the tick and then it finds a new host, okay? So again, key is here that the organism that it's feeding on is not getting killed. It's just getting its fitness reduced. All right, so commensalism. If I were to draw symbols for this, I would draw a plus and a zero, okay? So it's a relationship where one species benefits and the other species, it does not a plus, it doesn't gain anything, but it's not a minus. It doesn't lose anything either. The other species is like, meh, I could care less. Write that up there. That's a good one. Meh, okay? So the other species is neither harmed nor helped. So um, this is the case with a lot of these viney plants. So check out these vines. They're on a tree. Okay, so the vines crawl up the tree. Why do the vines want to crawl up the tree? So they can get towards the top of the tree and get more sunlight. So the vines benefit because they get more sunlight. But the tree is like, eh, I could care less. These vines aren't helping me, but they're not hurting me. Okay, now this is not true of all vines. Some vines go up trees and end up choking 
the tree and killing them, and that's not good. All right. So, but in this case, these vines, um, I'll put them back up in case you wanted that. These vines, they are not doing anything to the tree. Okay. So in this case, um, we have this example of the orchids that grow around the tree branches without actually harming the tree. So this tells you that one species benefits, the other one doesn't. Okay. But it also is not hurt because of this. All right. Mutualism. This is a happy one. Okay. So mutualism, both species benefit. So pollinators and insects or sorry, pollinators are insects. So pollinators and flowers are a classic example. All right, so let's take this bee here. What does the bee get from the flower? The bee gets nectar, okay? Well, what does the flower get from the bee? If you can see, there's a whole bunch of little dots on this guy, okay? So all the pollen from the flower gets on this bee, and when the bee flies to the next flower, that pollen lands on the next flower, and it pollinates this flower. So the flower gets help spreading its pollen and the bee gets food. So both of them end up benefiting. So mutualism is a relationship in which both species benefit. All right, I think this is the last slide. So the last one here is called symbiosis, okay? So symbiosis is an overarching concept, okay? It can include lots of different things that we already talked about. It's kind of a general term. It just means that two species live closely together. So for example, sea urchins and sea anemones, okay? They live really close to each other. The sea anemone goes and um, provides shelter for the clownfish and the clownfish, you know, gets its little house. So when two species live close together, it's just called symbiosis. The tricky thing here is that it includes good things like mutualism, right, where both species benefit. It also includes bad things like parasitism, right, where one species benefits and the other is harmed. So symbiosis is just a general term that we use that say that species are in close contact. They live really close with each other. So remember that with commensalism, we talked about the orchid and the tree. Well, they lived, like the orchid lived on the tree, right? So they're living close together. Parasite, a tick and a human. Well, the tick lives on the human, right? Mutualism, okay? The, with the bees, well, some of the, the bees, right, um, were pollinating the flowers. They weren't living super close to the flowers. So that might not be the best example. Um, because the bees move around a lot. But some other mutualisms, for example, there are animals that like to hang out on the backs of other animals um, and they both end up benefiting. Those would be symbiosis relationships. So anytime you've got two species that live really, really close together, that is called a symbiosis or a symbiotic relationship. All right.